In this lesson, I'll be talking about the heat of combustion, and specifically the heat of combustion of alkanols. Now, if you remember, alkanols have a hydroxyl functional group. And what I'll be talking about is how we measure the heat of combustion. Now, the heat of combustion is actually how much energy is released when we burn alkanols. So, alkanols are very flammable, and they all have different uh, flammabilities, and they will release different amounts of energy. And I'll discuss how we can measure that, and the parameters of experiments as to how we can find out the differences of the alkanols and why they're all different. So, the, combustions of, the combustion of alkanols is an exothermic process. And this means that it, they release heat as the reaction occurs. Now, in an excess supply of oxygen, the alkanol will undergo complete combustion to form carbon dioxide and water. And this is the reaction for the combustion of ethanol. Now, if you remember, the formula for ethanol is C2H5OH, which I'll just remind you the structure of here. Okay. And if we react it in an excess of oxygen, so three oxygen molecules there, will produce carbon dioxide and water. So that's a complete combustion reaction. So ethanol will co undergo complete combustion in excess oxygen to produce heat, carbon dioxide and water. So if you think you burn of burning ethanol, um, in some alcoholic drinks they actually burn the ethanol off to make a bit of a show for the patrons, uh, there's always going to be heat produced. Now the other type of combustion is incomplete combustion. And with incomplete combustion, it occurs in restricted oxygen supply, such as in air, where it's mainly nitrogen. Okay? So not all of the alkanol will actually turn into carbon dioxide and water. We'll actually get some different products. Just move that there so you can see. So, along with carbon dioxide and water, carbon monoxide and carbon soot, or carbon solid, okay, black soot, like in chimneys, is also produced. And as you can see from this picture, these are a range of different um, alkanols being burnt in different oxygen levels. So if you see that number four here, it looks like it has quite a lot of oxygen. And number one, on the other side, not too much oxygen. So if you think of your Bunsen burner at school, where you open and shut the valve to get more and less oxygen, the less oxygen, you'll get that yellow flame, number one, and the more oxygen, you'll get a more complete combustion, like number four. So the blue flame, which is this one, number four, indicates complete combustion. And a yellow or a mauve flame indicates incomplete combustion. So that'll be one, two, and three, will be incomplete and somewhere in the middle of the spectrum, going from four to one. So, the yellow colour is actually due to carbon particles, and if you remember, incomplete combustion will produce soot, which is carbon solid particles. So that's why that flame is yellow. So let's look at the molar heat of combustion of alcohols. Now, one mole of fuel with oxygen will go to water, carbon dioxide, and this is called the molar heat of combustion because we're talking about one mole, okay? And it's the amount of heat energy released on the complete combustion of one mole of alcohol or an alkanol. Remember, they're interchangeable. So the molar heat of combustion increases as the chain length of the alkanol increases. And I'll discuss why shortly. So if you think methanol, ethanol have short chains, they will actually have a lower molar heat of combustion than the longer chains, such as oct octanol or pentanol, for example. So, enthalpy is, here's another term that we have to look at. Enthalpy is actually the opposite of the molar heat of combustion. So the molar heat of combustion is how much energy is produced, whereas enthalpy is the heat content, okay? So the molar enthalpy of combustion is the negative value of the molar heat of combustion. So they're actually opposite. They have the same value, but one will be positive, one will be negative. 
So as I said, the molar heat of combustion, which is the heat released, is the opposite of enthalpy, which is the heat content, how much it is stored. So the positive release of heat energy coincides with a decrease in the heat content because of this, because of this relationship between the two. Now we have to look at an equation that you'll need to remember because we will need to do some calculations to measure the heat of combustion. So the first thing we need to know, how do we write the molar heat of combustion? This is how we write it here. It's a negative delta, which is a triangle, and a capital H. So now let's look at our equation for this reaction. Delta H equals minus, so here's our delta H, which is the change in heat content or the enthalpy change. And that's always remember units too. This is important. So delta H will be measured in kilojoules per mole. Okay? It can also be measured in joules per mole, but you'd have to change the other units as, you, as you're doing your um, calculations. Now, minus M, where M is the mass of water being heated by the burning alkanol. So this is how we're measuring now the molar heat of combustion. And mass is going to be in kilograms. C, this is a constant. So uh, you'll be probably given this, so you won't need to memorise that perhaps. It's uh, the specific heat capacity of the water being heated. So how much heat the water can actually take in. Okay, so that's a constant of 4.8 times 103 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Now Kelvin is another unit for temperature instead of degrees Celsius. Okay, so we, we're always using Kelvin. And if you look here, this is a capital K standing for Kelvin. This is a small K standing for kilo, as in kilojoule. And delta T, delta always stands for change. Okay, so delta T is the change in temperature of the water being heated. And this is measured in Kelvin again. So the negative before the M up here actually signifies that it's an exothermic reaction and that the fuel is releasing energy. So heat is being produced. So let's look at some typical values for the molar heat of combustion of alkanols. Now we have increasing chain lengths going down this table. So we start with methanol, ethanol going up by one carbon at a time. Methanol, ethanol, one propanol. Remember the one stands for where the hydroxyl group is along the chain. Propanol, pentanol, octanol. Okay, a few different ones you can compare. And over here we have their molar heats of combustion, which is shown by negative delta H. And it's in kilojoules per mole at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so these would change if we had a different temperature. And what you can see quite clearly is that the smaller the chain of the alkanol, the lower the molar heat of combustion. So it increases as the chain length increases. And that's very important, and we'll find out why very soon. So, how do we explain the differences in the molar heat of combustion of these alkanols? So why do shorter chain alkanols have lower molar heats of combustion? Well, let's look at the chemistry of the structure and that'll help us explain. So the polar alkanol group, or this OH group, if you remember, is polar. So it exhibits hydrogen bonding, which is a very strong form of bonding. And the nonpolar carbon chain exhibits dispersion forces, which are quite weak, but are very important for this specific topic because that's what's coming into play as to why these heats are different. So the longer the carbon chain, the greater the dispersion forces because there's more atoms involved. So if you remember, the shorter chains have less dispersion forces simply because there's less atoms involved. And the longer chains will have more dispersion forces. So therefore, the activation energy or the energy to break bonds okay, will be higher. So more energy will actually be released. So that's why the molar heat of combustion is going to be greater in the longer chain alkanols. Okay, so it's all down to the, high, to the, the bonding within these atoms. So hence, the longer the chain, the greater the molar heat of combustion. So that's a, a really 
great point to remember with regard to this topic. So now I'm going to introduce a new term called calorimetry and this is a simple way to measure the molar heat of combustion. And this is the setup here and it's a method to determine the molar heat of combustion of fuels. So what we have here, and this is an experiment that you'll probably do in the laboratory. If not, I'll be talking about it in the next lesson. So we get a stand, uh, usually just a retort stand, and we get a spirit burner down the bottom. And we put a specific volume of an alkanol into the spirit burner. And then we will hook up with a, with a clamp, a flask here, which we call a calorimeter. It could be a conical flask like we see here, or it could be a beaker. And we put a specific volume of water in there and we hook up a thermometer. Because remember in the equation, we have to measure the thermometer, the temperature change. And we also need a draft shield because any draft going onto that, that lit spirit burner will change the results. So we need to stop as much draft going there as possible. And that's our basic setup of calorimetry. So it's used to determine the heat released or absorbed by a reaction by measuring temperature changes to the surroundings. Now in the school laboratory, heat energy from combustion is transferred to a vessel of water, as you can see here, okay? And the temperature change of the water indicates the amount of heat released that is absorbed by the water. So that's calorimetry. And that finishes our theory part of this section about the heat of combustion of alkanols. So now we'll look at a few questions. Question one, which alternative below provides a correct definition for the molar heat of combustion of a fuel? Now, the molar heat of combustion of fuel, it is the heat energy in joules or kilojoules. Is it released by the combustion of one mole? used by the combustion of one mole, released by one kilogram, of one kilogram, or used by one kilogram. Now, let's remember the definition. The molar heat of combustion refers to one mole of a fuel, and it defines the amount of energy released through combustion. So it's not the amount of energy used up. So therefore, our answer is going to be, it's released by the combustion of one mole of a fuel. Question two, the heat of combustion for one propanol is 2,016 kilojoules per mole. Calculate its heat of combustion in kilojoules per gram. So we have to convert from moles to grams here. So the formula for one propanol is there, C3H7OH. So we need to start by calculating its molecular weight. So three carbons, eight hydrogens, and 16 for the OH group is 60.094 grams. And to convert from kilojoules per mole to kilojoules per gram, we need to use the molecular weight. So we have that, and we know that that is for one mole, and it produces 2,016 kilojoules of energy when it's burnt. So one gram will produce, we simply times by the moles, 2016 by 1 over the molecular weight, and our answer is going to be 33.5 grams. Sorry, kilojoules per gram. No, sorry, grams, I apologise, that is grams. Calculate, I'll just remove those lines for you. Question 3. Calculate the amount of energy released by the combustion of 0.1 mole of octane. The molar heat of combustion of octane is 5,471 kilojoules per mole. Now the molar heat of combustion, just once again, describes the energy released from the combustion of one mole of fuel. So for 0.1 mole, it will be this number, 5,471 kilojoules per mole, times 0.1 mole, and you get 547.1 kilojoules. Question four. Calculate the amount of energy released by the combustion of 1.7 grams of propanol. The molar heat of combustion of propanol is 2,021 kilojoules per mole. 
So let's look at the molar mass for propanol. Once again, add it all up and we get 60.094 grams. And the energy released in kilojoules per mole times the number of moles will be the energy for this reaction. So if we plug in our numbers there, we get 2021 times 1.7, which is the grams of propanol, over the molecular weight, and we get the energy for this reaction released will be 57 kilojoules, I apologize. So finally, question five, which is a little bit more tricky. Calculate the mass of butanol required to raise the temperature of 200 mils of water by 15 degrees Celsius. The molar heat of combustion of butanol is 2,676 kilojoules per mole. So let's look at butanol. There's the formula for butanol. So again, we're going to calculate the molar mass for butanol. So calculating the molar mass, we get 74.12 grams per mole. Now using our equation, and this is the first time we've used it here, this is our equation for the molar heat of combustion. And I've written up here, well, not written, but there you have the values from the, the previous question because it's quite lengthy. They're the values you're going to need to calculate this. So let's look at the energy released for this reaction. Using this equation, it's going to be the mass of the water, 200 grams. Now, if you remember, the volume is 200 mils. But because the density of water is 1 and density is mass over volume, because the density is 1, the mass will also be the same as the volume. So it's 200 times our constant, our water constant, and times the temperature, 15 Kelvin. Now, because it's a change in temperature, the temperature in degrees Celsius there will be the same in Kelvin. So don't get confused about that. So we get 12,600 joules, converting that to kilojoules, and we will do that over there, 12.6 kilojoules. So then we calculate the moles of butanol, which will be 12.6 kilojoules, divided by the, the heat, the molar heat of combustion, and we get the moles, which is 0 0.0047 moles. And so therefore, the mass will be the moles times the molecular weight, and we get 0.35 grams. So if we put that all together in a simplified version, we have 12.5, 12.6 kilojoules over 2676 kilojoules per mole times by the molecular weight, and our answer is 0.35 grams. So that wraps up the discussion in this lesson about the molar heat of combustion. And in the next lesson, I'll be talking more about calorimetry and the experiment that you can do in the laboratory to actually measure these molar heats of combustion using a calorimeter.